This is Rich with Cruz RO Water and Technotics, and we're continuing with our review of the different modules that come with the Cruz RO water maker. This is our standard remote panel. So the different pieces we have here, we'll review the front and the back of the panel, and we'll talk a little about what these pieces do in terms of function of the unit. So right off the bat, you got your two electrical switches, the boost pump and the high pressure pump. We like those pumps to be able to turn off and on individually because, for example, the boost pump is used to prime the system and also for fresh water flushing by itself or pickling. You don't need to run the high pressure pump. So you'll always turn the boost pump switch on first let the unit prime, verify flow into the high pressure pump, then turn the high pressure pump on. So these are lighted switches, so you'll see them illuminated when you're making water and the unit's being operated. This needle valve here is labeled pressure regulating valve. This is what adjusts your system pressure that you monitor here on the gauge up to 800. 800 PSI is the normal operating pressure where you want to make water. This is how you monitor it. By slowly closing the needle valve, you'll see the needle rise up to 800 PSI. This blue handle is what we call the product water selector valve. At startup and shutdown, it's in the water sample location. Once you've checked it with the handheld TDS meter that we provide you and see that it's under 500 ppm and it's good clean water, then you turn the valve to the tank position. So looking at the back of the panel, you'll see that there's a three-way valve here. It comes out of the flow meter. Water comes into this fitting from your pressure vessels and goes through the flow rotometer on the front of the panel, which lets you monitor how much you're producing. Then it goes to the three-way valve. So you have a sample location and a water tank location where you'll run that blue line to. Now, you can run that blue line up to the top of your tank. You can use all 30 feet of it. You know, it can handle that type of line run without a problem. So. Let's go back to the front of the panel here and talk a little bit more about the pieces. This is the flow meter. There's liter per minute and gallon per minute. Per minute. So you can monitor your production flow rate by the little white float that will come up as you're making water. You'll read the float as it says here somewhere on the uh, flow meter gauge by the mushroom caps top. There's a uh, you know, a triangular mushroom, you can picture that. The top of the, the bottom part of the mushroom cap has a little fine point, and that's where you actually read the production. Now, you notice this flow meter is a lot bigger than ones you see on a lot of water makers. I'm just a fan of being able to actually read what amount of water I'm producing. That helps you in troubleshooting. It helps you in membrane maintenance and to know the health of your membrane. But, you know, you can actually use this flow meter to know how much you're making versus kind of a wild ass, oops, a wild guess with some, with some of the other ones. So that's, that's your product water. This is your boost pump pressure gauge. This is your boost pump regulating valve. So this is monitoring the pressure right at the inlet to your high pressure pump. The reason that's important you know, we used to have a smaller panel without this. And over the years, you know, when you, when you do customer service, when you take troubleshooting calls, you kind of find out what problems people typically have with water makers. The number one problem, getting flow, enough flow, from the through hole, through the pre-filters, into the high pressure pump. High pressure pumps don't like to suck. So we say in the manual, you want to see 10 PSI here on this gauge. Really, you just need positive pressure, four, five, six. I'd be happy with that and I'd make water. But 10 PSI is an easy, easy number to see. And as that starts dropping, you know that it's time to either change your pre-filters or you got a raw water strainer that may be partially clogged. 
the boost pump regulating valve can be used to adjust what pressure you have here. What, what's this doing is it's sending the excess water that the high pressure pump doesn't need back to the suction side of the pump. So with this all the way closed, increase, righty tighty, you're closing the valve, you're putting all of the suction from the boost pump from the through hole and pushing it into the high pressure pump. With all of this all the way open, with the valve all the way open, some more of that flow is just circulating in a loop and it's there if the pump needs it. So there's nothing wrong with running at 20, 30, 40, 50 PSI while you're fresh water flushing, while you're priming the unit. You don't have to adjust this valve all the time. Once you've set the unit so that you're 10 PSI when the high pressure pump is running, you can leave it. When you turn on the boost pump, you'll be up at 30. The unit primes, turn the high pressure pump on, and now you're not pushing into a deadheaded pump. The pump's sucking and wanting flow. It'll drop down to 10. So once you set this for the line length of your unit, for the head lift, you can pretty much leave that there. And then as your pressure drops down, you know that you either got dirty pre-filters or it's time to check your raw water strainer. So you're not having to adjust this valve at each time you start and stop the water maker. It's an initial startup type of a procedure and then you're monitoring what's going on here. Your uh, system pressure, that's an every time you start and stop. See, the RO membranes don't like sudden pressure slams. So you just don't want to leave this at 800 PSI, turn off the high pressure pump, turn off the boost pump. That'll slam those membranes with 800 PSI. So you turn on the boost pump, turn on the high pressure pump. The system pressure will be about 150 PSI with the valve open and just your high pressure pump and your boost pump running. You'll see nothing in the flow rotometer unless you're in fresh water. But if you're in seawater, it takes about 650 PSI to push through the membrane and get water into the flow meter. So you slowly increase the pressure to 800. Then you're measuring your flow rate. You check your water. At the end of the run, decrease the pressure, high pressure pump off, boost pump off. So, in terms of mounting locations, where do you want to mount this? I mean, you're going to need about four inches behind it for the fittings. It, it can be bulkhead mounted, but it can also have four or five inch standoffs inside a locker, inside a bulkhead. But every time you go to start and stop the water maker, you're going to be putting your hands on this. So this is something you need access to. This and the valving and cleaning assembly, that's something you're going to touch the valves on that every time you go to make water. So those pieces you want to think about where you're going to locate them. There's obviously no you know, temperature restrictions to this. Yeah, it could go in an engine room. But you want to have this somewhere that you can access it easily. In terms of distance, let's talk about the high pressure flow path. You're going to go from the high pressure pump to the pressure vessel, from the pressure vessel to this fitting on the back of the panel. So you need to go from the pressure vessel to the panel with the high pressure uh, hose. So your two high pressure hose runs from the high pressure pump to the RO membrane and then from the RO membrane to the panel. So that's, that's in terms of planning. You know, you have, in terms of water lines, you have a brine outlet, which is a quarter inch. Because after this needle valve on the panel, it goes from 800 PSI to ambient, and that pushes it overboard. So in terms of water lines, and this goes to where you're going to mount it considerations, you have brine outlet, high pressure hose, sample location, water tanks, a quarter inch line that measures that boost pump pressure. And then you have the two uh, inlet and outlet bypass lines. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight water lines are coming to this panel. 
So, you know, when I mount this at my helm station with my SSB radio and everything right below, well, no, I wouldn't. I mean, I would want this to be somewhere, you know, not right above my whole electronics package on the boat. But that's pretty much the remote panel for the Cruise RO water maker. And it measures 11 by 11 and a quarter, and you'll need about four inches behind in terms of a mounting location for this unit.